Greetings everyone. I'd like to take a few minutes to help you understand ROS with UML examples, specifically in this case, sequence models. So I want to show you how a sequence model from UML will map to concepts in ROS. Let's begin by reminding ourselves what sequence models are. Sequence models give us an untimed, ordered sequence of messages between objects and they exist for a specific use case. Sequence models are not meant to describe all particular things that a model might do or that two models, two objects interacting might do, but are intended to tell us for one specific execution of software how we expect different objects will behave. In ROS, this needs a slight amount of modification in order to speak about it in ROS um, details. So in, in terms of uh, being able to use the exact terminology of ROS. So in ROS, messages flow in topics. And objects are actually called nodes. So we could say this again as sequence models give an untimed but ordered sequence of messages through a topic between nodes for a specific use case. So we do, we do still need the concept of a use case, but that use case is describing one particular case in which we expect something to happen. So let's view this now in terms of a specific example. So I'd like to move the turtle around in turtle sim. Turtle sim is kind of a standard check to make sure your ROS correctly is, is running correctly. So the summary of this use case is that we want to move the turtle around using the uh, command velocity topic to which turtle subscribe and the twist message that's the standard message type for command velocity. So our summary is pretty vague. We just want to move the turtle around. We want to use the command vel topic, and we want to send twist messages in order to do it. So we have two actors to do this. We have turtle one, who's one of the actors, and then we also have a controller. So this controller is going to allow us to make this turtle actually move around. We have a precondition, which is that we actually need the turtle sim node to be up and running. And the turtle sim node, as you know, is going to be the node that actually uh, receives these message types. The description of our use case is the following. The turtle moves around for one second after the receipt of each new message. After one second, the turtle actually stops moving. I've let this out of the description, but uh, you can read up on what the turtle sim node does uh, if you cruise around and check out the ROS page. So we also have some exceptions that belong to this. The exceptions are, if we receive a new message before finished moving, what should we do? In fact, we begin to immediately uh, interpret the new message. So we don't have to wait one second before we read our message queue. It could also happen that the turtle could try to leave the screen. So if this happens, we want the turtle to actually stay on the edge of the screen. Um, and finally, it could happen that the turtle would receive a negative velocity. So we'll experiment with that to see what actually happens here. I don't have a use case for that yet. That's one of the exercises that will be left for you at the end of this video. The post condition is that the turtle should still be on the screen. So regardless of what we do, regardless of what exceptions we throw, as long as the turtle sim node is running, the turtle should be on the screen and should be visible. So we have four basic sequences that we should be able to describe, and each of these sequences is different. Sequence one is kind of the nominal case in which things behave correctly. Sequence two has an exception, which is that we don't wait one second before we receive the new message. Sequence three is when the turtle tries to leave the screen, what do we do? And sequence four is the turtle receives a negative velocity. So the reason that we have these sequence models is to be able to describe essentially a test case. That if I receive this event in this order, this should be the outcome. So we should be able to describe both what is happening, the order in which it happens, and what would happen if something goes wrong. So I've drawn out a specific example for the turtle moving around for one second after the receipt of each new message. Let's check this out together. This is how it would look as a sequence model. So we have the turtle sim node. That's the type of the nodes. We see the turtle sim node. I'm just going to circle this here. So this is the kind of object as we see in a UML sequence model. And the name of the instance we see over here on the left hand side. So how do I know that that's the name of the type and the name of the instance? Well, let me just start up turtle sim and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to run ROS core here. This tells me now that ROS is running. I'm going to make a new tab, so I press Control Shift T to do that. ROS run turtle sim turtle sim node. So I can see my turtle sim running over here. 
This looks like He-Man Turtle. He has a bunch of muscles sticking out all over him. Um, but I don't know anything about this turtle. I know it seems to be called Turtle One, uh, but the node name is slash Turtle Sim. So I've described this in my image here that Turtle One is the name that I'm actually using as the name of the node because this describes the topic on which you should be providing things. And Turtle Sim underscore node, this prescribes what the type of the node is. So it's a type Turtle Sim node, but the name of the node is Turtle One. How can I make things move around? Well, I can send messages to my turtle sim node to make it move around. And I'm gonna do that through the turtle teleop key, which is the name of a different kind of node. And I think it's gonna be called teleop turtle. Let's check to see if my memory is correct here. So I'm gonna make a new tab over here. Can I do that here? Nah, I can come up here to tabs and say, new tab somewhere. Ah, here we are, open tab, control shift T. So I typically use control shift T because that uh, is a keystroke and I'm a, kind of a keystroke kind of person. Ross run, turtle, sim, turtle. And if I hit tab here, it'll say everything in this package that's called turtle will start to pop up if I just keep hitting tab. So I've already run turtle sim underscore, underscore node once. What I wanna run here is turtle underscore teleop. This now says, use arrow keys to move the turtle, reading from the keyboard. So if I press up, which I'm gonna press now, I'll see that the turtle moves straight ahead. And if I press left, I'll see that the turtle turns left. Let's describe these two events received in this order using the sequence model. I'll go back to my sequence model now and show you what I mean. So the first thing that I did was that I press the up arrow. So the turtle teleop key node received an up arrow event. And when that happened, it sent a command through the command velocity topic that I would like for you to set your linear velocity in the x direction to be 2.0. After that happened, the turtle sim node somehow told its internal dynamics to move. And then after one second, it got a response back that it was done moving. So it stopped moving at that point. So the next command that I sent was left arrow, and the left arrow command, which came into turtle tail layout key, was again sent through the command velocity topic, but now instead of sending linear information to 2.0 in the x direction, it sets the angular velocity or z velocity 2.0. And again, the turtle send node moves, and then after one second, it stopped moving. How did I know that these were the values here? Sorry for using my mouse arrow here. It makes it look a little weird. How did I know that I was seeing these values here and here? Well, I set up a little bit of a debug. Let me show you how to do this in ROS so that you can see exactly what I mean. So let me now show you in yet another tab, Control-Shift-T, ROS topic, echo. And I wanna echo the turtle one velocity command velocity. By echoing this velocity, I'll be able to see the new messages as they come. So I dragged it out of that set of tabs so that I could press up in this window. Now, if you try to press up here, nothing will happen. You'll just get this bizarre uh, Unicode character bizarro thing that doesn't really understand. Um, in fact, let me control C this, clear it so that we don't have that clogging up our, our visualization. So I'm gonna click in this window up here and I'm gonna press up and we'll see the new, like the, we would expect the turtle to move up here. And we'll also see the contents of the command velocity topic appear in this below window. So if I press up, I see that I have linear of x equals 2.0 and everything else is zero. So I can actually, I could send this value over the same wire without using the teleop key in order to make the turtle move straight. And likewise, if I press left, I'll see here that I see linear, all the values are zero, and angular, I have a value of z of 2.0. So you might ask yourself, self, can I make the turtle move around without actually using the turtle teleop key? So let's try to do number one again, but using the command line only. So instead of using the turtle teleop key, I want to use the command line to move this around. This is where the sequence model becomes really powerful because I want to send, uh, sorry again, sorry I moved my mouse there. 
So I want to send messages to the same turtle sim node. I just want to send them now from a different actor or from a different object. So instead of sending from turtle teleop key, I want to send from something else. So let's erase this and replace it with the ROS topic publish command or ROS topic pub. So the type of that, oh, sorry again, the type of this object is of type ROS topic publisher. And it's actually going to have a name that looks really strange. So how do I know that this looks really strange? Well, I kind of did this in advance and I can tell you exactly how strange it's going to look. Let's let me show you with ROS run RQT graph. So this gives me a graph of all the ROS nodes that are currently running. And you can see some of these will map directly to the names of objects that we saw before. So here's the, the turtle sim node. Um, turtle sim uh, was of type turtle sim node, and it receives objects through the command velocity topic. Um, but I'm also subscribing uh, by doing ROS topic echo. I'm subscribing to the teleop key uh, and being able to display all of those keystrokes that are all the messages that are sent over command velocity. I'm echoing those values through this uh, down here. So if I control C this ROS topic echo and refresh my ROS graph, I'll see that one of my subscribers went away. So I don't have this really weird looking uh, ROS topic echo anymore. I just have now the teleop turtle, which is up here. This is my teleop turtle. And then I also have turtle sim, which is over here. Instead of doing ROS topic echo now, actually I'm going to turn that back on so we can see the things come across. So if I refresh here, I'll see this ROS topic. So this is my ROS topic echo node. I'm going to make a new node, which is ROS topic pub. So control shift T, ROS topic pub. And I want to publish to turtle one command velocity. If I just try to do this, it tells me I'm doing something wrong. So I need to say, ROS topic pub, so I'm going to be publishing data. What's the name of the topic I'm going to be publishing on? And then when I say type here, I need to know the type of the message that I'm sending. So what message type am I sending? I can see that here, command underscore velocity is my topic name. But what is the type of message? I can tell this by saying ROS uh, message info, turtle one command bell. Oops, sorry, uh, ROS topic info turtle one command bell. This tells me that turtle one command velocity is of type geometry messages twist. So ROS topic pub turtle one command bell. So that's the name of, uh, of the topic name. The type is geometry messages twist. And then I just need to say what the value would be. So if I try this with nothing, it says, hey, don't forget to specify the values of the message. In order to do this, I'm now going to say, well, I want to send a twi twist message, but I want to make sure that I send first the linear value. And the linear value that I want to send is that x should be equal to 2.0. So this kind of uh, syntax here is called YAML or yet another markup language. And as soon as I sent linear value with x equals to 2.0, we saw that the turtle scooted ahead for one second at 2.0. So it's interesting that even though I only sent one message, I still have an active node here. If I refresh my node graph, I'll now see this other really weird name, ROS topic 9318, which is publishing command velocity information to two different places. It's publishing it to my turtle sim, which is here, and also to my ROS topic echo, which we see here. So command bell with 2.0 and 0. I can do the same thing if I come back to, uh, to here. So I can change to a new value. Instead of sending a linear value of x equals 2.0, I can send an angular value, I forgot one of the, so with an angular value of 2.0, I can make the turtle turn. So I can send that as many times as I want to and the turtle will turn again. One interesting thing that I could do 
is that I could send uh, an angular value as well as uh, so I can send angular of z equals to 2.0 and I can also send linear of x equals to 1.5 and I should be able to see oops I should be able to see the, row, the turtle actually turn in a circle. So that's kind of cool. So just because the turtle teleop key can only send one dimension at a time doesn't mean that we can't send lots of dimensions at one time. So I might even be able, I've never tried this before, x equals to 1.5, y is equal to 0 0.25. Yeah, it actually doesn't do anything. So sending values in y uh, and probably in z uh, are not going to make any difference at all. But I can make the value be, say, 5.5, which should make the, uh, the turtles going to move in a much faster direction. So we should be able to make lots of really strange things happen if we know how to send those messages. Let's go back and revisit in our drawing what did this look like. So now instead of sending an up arrow to Ross Topic Pub, we actually provided the exact contents of the message, which is that I want to send a command velocity to that topic, I want to send a twist message, and I want the linear value of x to be equal to 2.0. And the same for the left arrow. I replaced left arrow with the baseline information of making my angular velocity go with 2.0 radians per second. So what does all this mean? Well, this means that we can now start to describe message passing, just like we would for an object-oriented language, as concepts that are happening inside of ROS. So as an exercise for you, I would encourage you to now try to create use cases and sequence models for two, three, and four exceptions. Likewise, could you create a test case script if you had to, to do each of these? So what would a test case script look, for, look like for number three? I think number three was where, um, where, the, where we receive um, a message. Well, what was number three? Which, which one was that? Number three was the turtle tries to leave the screen. So could we create a test case to make the turtle try to leave the screen? And in order to see how to do these things, I encourage you to read up on latching with Ross Topic Pub, so being able to send a message over and over again. And there's even a way to write out a file and then read from that file and say once a second, publish a new message from the file. Um, and you, you can also change the rate that you use to publish new messages. So this uh, Ross Topic Pub allows you to describe in very specific ways exactly what you'd like to do in exactly what order. So it's an open loop way in order to control something. So thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please post them. Uh, I'd love to be able to help you. Thanks very much.